Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone. We are recording this live from UNCCD headquarters in Bonn, Germany. And today we are really happy to greet one hour of our dedicated LAN ambassadors, a Grammy Award winner, US Billboard number one artist, environmentalist, music composer, just to name a few, Mr. R Ricky Cash. Oh, very glad to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. And of course, I will come in the discussion, Mr. Ibrahim Tiao, uh, Executive Secretary of the UNCCD. Good morning, all. Good afternoon. So, Mr. Tiao, last September uh, in COP14 New Delhi in India, UNCCD officially named Riki Kesh as Land Ambassador. What motivated this decision? The UN Convention to Combat Desertification is a global convention, um, and we are concerned about land issues. And to have someone like Riki Kesh as our Land Ambassador, a champion of environmental issues, of sustainable development, a musician uh, who is not in an expert on uh, on land but who cares about land because land feed, uh, feeds us land provides us with water that we drink and lands provides us provides us with the clothes that we eat we we, we have and everything that uh, we we need to breathe uh, half of the oxygen that we breathe is coming from land so having someone like Ricky Cage is absolutely fantastic now we have six land ambassadors from around the world Ricky is one of them Uh, three of our land ambassadors are musicians. Uh, it is not by chance that we have done that. And we know that music is one of the ways of transmitting a message. And we, to have someone like Ricky Cage together with uh, the, the five other land ambassadors is absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. Like Ibrahim mentioned, the entertainment industry and music is a powerful uh, force to social change. So how do you envision to use your art to educate the public about the land issues and about the role of UNCCD in addressing them. Yeah, of course, I'm extremely honored to be an ambassador with the, uh, the UNCCD. And uh, I, uh, for the last few years, I've dedicated my life and my music entirely uh, to, uh, to sustainability and issues of the environment and climate change and, uh, and, you know, and social impact around those areas. Now, music is a very, very powerful language, not just for communicating a message, but for retaining that message deep into the consciousness mm. of a listener. Like the songs that we learned during our childhood are songs that we never forget. The morals that we learn through the songs are morals that we never forget. And of course, like, you know, big brands use a lot of music for actually, you know, their television commercials and the radio commercials simply because they understand the power of music in their case to drive a message of sales. Mm. So that's why, so for me, being a musician, I decided that, you know, I need to harness the power of music to bring about social change and positive social impact. And that's the reason why it's, it's, it's very, very important for me to use uh, this uh, this talent of music uh, to actually uh, to actually spread the message of the UNCCD. Mm. Another way of spreading the message of UNCCD is organizing um, worldwide events. So we have uh, one major event coming up, 17th of June, Desertification and Drought Day. And this year, the focus is on the role that we all have in affecting and degrading the land by our consumption and production patterns. Unfortunately, uh, as of now, close to 70% of the earth is degraded or at least less productive than it used to be. So, Mr. Tiao, How can we limit the impact of the consumption and production of food and feed and fiber uh, that they have on the land? Well, 17 of June, as you said, is uh, the International Day uh, to Combat Desertification. We call it Desertification and Drought Day. Uh, 17 of June is just one day. It doesn't mean that we have only to, we have to celebrate only on, on 17 of June. Every day is a day we should be celebrating. Every day we eat, every day we drink. Every day we wear clothes, every day we breathe. So it is critical that we celebrate the 17th of, day, 17th of June as a very special day, but that on our daily life, on our daily activities, on our daily decisions, we have in mind that what we drink, what the amount of water we use for irrigation, for uh, Birth, birthing out our teeth uh, is absolutely critical and is coming from land. We, it is important that we realize that our lifestyle is impacting, a, is having a huge impact on the land. So every single consumer, every single decision you make, whether you go to the shopping mall to buy a cloth, whether you uh, decide to use that amount of water to um, drain for drainage, for irrigation, 
is a, an important decision and that has an impact on land. So it is important that food, that the feed, animal feed, and that the fiber we use is absolutely controlled. Sustainable consumption and production is not a slogan. It is a way of life. It is a way we are behaving. It is the way we are making decisions. And every single decisions, decision that we make has an impact on land, has a, an implication on the way others are having access to land, has implications on poverty, has implications on all 17 goals of sustainable development goals. There is one goal dedicated to land, that is true, which is goal 15, but all goals have a connection with land. All other 17, 16 goals have connections on land. So it is important that we do not consider land management as an issue that is for governments only or for decision makers only. It is for our daily decisions. It is us as consumers. It is us as human beings. It is this young person who is going to school as much as it is the industrial uh, uh, leader or for that matter, uh, the consumer, the regular consumer that is going to the restaurant. Mr. Chiao, you were mentioning daily decisions. So, for example, uh, Ricky, uh, I know that you don't own a car, you use public transportation, you are uh, consciously vegetarian, um, you, you make efforts to uh, buy sustainable goods. So, can you tell us a little bit about this way of living? Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I absolutely agree with what Mr. Abraham spoke about, about uh, consumption. I mean, that's uh, it, it, he put it uh, so beautifully. You know, we all of us are aware of a lot of problems that uh, uh, that are uh, that we are facing, especially when it comes to the environment, when it comes to sustainability and things like that. Uh, but I believe that the biggest threat to our environment, the biggest threat to us as a species, as a human species, is, a, is the constant thought that we have that somebody else is going to make a difference. You know, mm -hmm. we're constantly thinking that governments, we're waiting for governments to make a difference for NGOs, for intergovernmental bodies, for corporations to make a difference. When the truth is that we have to bring about massive change through behavioral change. And uh, we have to empower ourselves to believe that, that you know, that uh, each one of us can bring about change within our own capacities and within our own lives. So uh, I believe that uh, the, uh, uh, I mean, that uh, through responsible consumption, like, you know, in the sense that uh, by consuming less, because uh, right now, the paradigm that has been taught to us from our childhood has always been that, you know, that uh, that the amount of uh, the amount uh, that we can actually purchase, the amount we can consume, the amount we can actually waste is dictated by the amount of money we have. You know, it's dictated by finances. But we need to change that paradigm and we need uh, to make everyone understand that uh, we have to limit our consumption by how much the planet can afford, you know, and that needs to change. And uh, uh, pretty much everyone is aware of all these things that I'm talking about. But then how do we change this awareness? into action you know mm -hmm. and i believe that music can be that catalyst and that's why i'm in the picture and that's why i'm trying to do my best because i believe that music and the language of music can be that catalyst to drive people from mere awareness uh, to action because music is a very emotional mm -hmm. language to communicate to people and we can move people in this particular way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. indeed when it comes to protecting our land resources everyone is concerned yeah. and um, so andia we were talking about 17 of june so we are inviting you to think about what you can do on your own scale in your community with your colleagues your friend your family at school to limit your footprint on land so you can send us your ideas your plans uh, your either a big event that you're organizing, either small uh, concrete actions to ddd2020 at uncd.int. And like we do every year, we will post online your ideas, your plan to inspire all the other people who are following us. So, uh, Mr. Chow, this week, the United Nations has launched a decade on ecosystem restoration, 2021-2030, which aspires to prevent, halt, and reverse the degradation of ecosystem worldwide. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, this and how uh, UNCCD is involved? The UN Convention to Combat, to Combat Desertification is mostly concerned about land, land degradation. But land is where we believe mm -hmm. as human beings. And every single impact we can avoid or reduce is important. So first of all, we need to make sure that we have land in balance. We need land, absolutely essential for our lives. But we also need to make sure that all decisions we make on land are done in a balanced way so that we do not degrade further land. We do not further degrade 
the land that we live in, which is the only land we have. Uh, when uh, you talk about climate change and biodiversity, you talk also about land. When you talk about, uh, when you are concerned about your children, you are concerned about how much land is left, how much forests mm. are being depleted, how much forest, how much water is being harvested, and in which way it is being done. So the new decade that has been adopted by uh, the General Assembly of the United Nations to be the UN decade on, on, on the restoration, on ecosystem restoration, is the time frame we have 10 years as a window to basically close the loop, which coincide, by the way, with the 10 years of the UN of the Sustainable Development Goals, the last 10 years, the, de the, new, the last decade of the Sustainable Development Goals, the decade of action. So it is critical that as part of the solutions to climate change, we consider land as part of the solutions to reducing biodiversity loss that we consider land, as part of the solution to just have a planet that is livable, you consider also land as part of the solution. So it is one reason why the UN Convention to Combat Desertification is a critical place to have this kind of discussions. But what we need now is to have action at scale. 25 years, since the three conventions of Rio, biodiversity, climate change, and desertification were adopted, we have enough policies, we have enough knowledge, we have enough science. What we need now is action at scale. And that is the 10 years we have left between 2021 and 2030 to basically close the loop, to basically close the gap, to make sure that we restore as much land as possible, mm. we restore as much uh, uh, marine biodiversity as possible, we restore as much ecosystems as possible to leave to our children, our, our grandchildren, a livable planet. N nothing more, nothing less. We, we are at the crossing, at, at cross path, where either we leave a livable planet to our children, or we leave a mess to our children and, and grandchildren and let them sort it out. Can we, afford doing that? Can we just leave in our conscience the fact that we have, we as human beings, our actions, no one else, our actions have led to the mess that we are leaving to our children and grandchildren? Or can we do something else? That is the 10 years we have left for us to do. Uh, in your view, Ricky, why is the restoration of ecosystems fundamental in, in achieving all those sustainable development goals. And of course, all the sustainable development goals are pretty much interlinked. And uh, uh, since I'm an ambassador with the UNCCD, I'm, uh, I'm very uh, partial towards land. <laughs> and I believe that land restoration is, is pretty much key. And it's quite obvious why it is key, you know, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to all the sustainable development goals. Uh, so now, uh, what I would like to talk about is that uh, there is this uh, particular Sanskrit phrase in India. It's known as Vasudeva Kutumbakam. It's at the center of our spirituality, of our culture, of our traditions, um, pretty much of our history also. And it literally means the world is one family. Mm. But uh, right now, when we think about the world is one family, the only thing that comes to our mind is basically living in peace and harmony between Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs, Christians, Jews, basically different parts of the human race. Uh, because somewhere along our journey of being humans, we've forgotten that we are not the only species on this planet. But if you look at the true meaning of Vasudeva Kutumbakam, which is this really ancient phrase, it actually means living in absolute peace and absolute harmony with every single entity on this planet, whether living or non-living. So it not only talks about living in harmony with all life, but also uh, living in uh, harmony and peace with the water we drink, with the land we walk on and with the air we breathe and so on and so forth. So I believe that, you know, that uh, we as humans need to go back to our roots. We need to understand that, you know, that living in absolute peace and absolute harmony with all life and also with the elements of nature is key to our survival. And I guess this is what the UNCCD stands for. And that's why I am completely an absolutely behind it. Talking about uh, other species that are on this planet, you recently <coughs> composed the soundtrack for a documentary, Wild Karnataka. Yeah. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about it. No, of course, it was a huge honor to do that because uh, I come from the state of Karnataka and this film is based on the Western Ghats, which is, which is uh, pretty much uh, a part of Karnataka. And it's one of the top 10 biodiversity hotspots on this planet. Most number of tigers in a region anywhere in the world, most number of elephants anywhere in the world. So, uh, the, and of course, uh, it's been narrated by uh, Sir David Attenborough, and it's been an absolute dream of mine uh, to work with him. So I got that dream fulfilled through this project. So uh, through making the music of this film, and as I mentioned, music is a very emotional language for communication. When you look at the visuals, 
these animals could be from any region in the world you know because when you look at the visuals there are no humans in it there are no human mm-hmm. settlements so these pristine forests and these amazing places could be anywhere in the world so while composing the music it was quite a challenge for me to constantly remind the viewer that all these animals are indian and uh, this place is within india that's why i composed a completely indian score but using of course orchestras and things like that but i composed a primarily indian score to remind the audience about that and the second thing that i was very mindful about while composing the music was that i did not want to vilify any species mm. so basically what happens is when you see a tiger normally the knee jerk reaction of a composer is that let's put some dangerous music over there let's put some horror music there but for me i wanted to showcase that every single animal is a very important part of the ecosystem and uh, whether it's uh, whether the animal is a, is is uh, is prey or a predator and uh, normally if the prey does not die uh, is not killed Uh, there's a celebration and which i completely understand and you and i have also celebrated when there's a failed hunt but at the same time uh, when at uh, same time i also showcase the predator with a little bit of sympathy because that predator will probably go hungry you know for a day or maybe a couple of days because that predator did not get mm-hmm. his or her food so that's that's what i did while composing the music i try to be mindful about all these facts and try to be a lot more responsible while composing the music for the film and it works very well um, i saw the film and, uh, thank uh, yeah. you so much <laughs> <laughs> uh, mr chow would you have a last word uh, for our uh, audience the last word is a word of optimism you talked about the un decade um, to restore ecosystems you talked about the un convention to combat desertification we as human beings we are intelligent enough and we have all the means in our capa- in our capacity to change things we uh, have the science we have the knowledge we have the technology and we have the intelligence to make decisions that are compatible with a planet that is sustainable so we have 10 years to make a decisions to make decisions and we have a new generation that is absolutely conscious you see it in the streets you have a new generation of political leaders in all parts of the world uh not only in the developing in the developed world but also in the developing developing countries that are saying we can make things happen so i am really optimistic that we have the tools and we have the means and we have the capacity and we have the right decisions to make the change that are needed and we have 10 years to do it Thank you very much Ibrahim Tia, Ricky Kesh and uh, for you at home if you are uh, curious about Wild Karnataka it's uh, being broadcasted uh, worldwide in on many TV channels so look up your TV schedule and it's going to be uh, also available on streaming platforms really soon uh, in the meantime if you want to listen to the wonderful soundtrack it's available for free online you can go on our Facebook page and we posted the link to uh, the full album so enjoy and uh, see you uh, at our next live event